Rain leak. Never have I ever started a podcast with my pants off. <laughs> oh, oh boy, put a finger down. Oh, show them on cam too. Show, oh, show them on the wide. Man. <laughs> oh man. Oh, we should do a podcast where uh, we just have a bunch of random camera angles just for <laughs> just for these ones where we're not yeah. in person. <laughs> really spice it up. Have you ever oh. seen the guy who goes like on Omegle? And he is like a bald dude who's just like looks yes. at people and he has like cameras outside his house. <laughs> it's so good. It's so, so good because he has like the fake disconnection thing. Uh, yeah. But now Omegle's so dead. Funny. So Omegle is dead and gone. I forgot about that. Yeah, they killed I mean, it. They brought it out to the back of the shed, shot it in the head, and then told them that they sent it to a farm up north. Yeah, it's what it deserved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's, too many, what... there's too many cocks on that fucking website. I'm surprised it lasted as as long as it did. Yeah, honestly. Me too. Um, yeah. R.I.P. Omegle, but um, uh, not really. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sad about it. Like it died and it was in the news, but no one went to the funeral. Mm hmm. It was just like, ah, oh, okay. It's uh, like when Tumblr died it, and everyone was like, yeah, you got rid of porn. Of course you died. Yeah. Stupid. What would you think is gonna happen? Why it do you hits, think but we Tumblr's were here back now with porn? Right. Right. Yeah. Tumblr's back with porn. But I think they brought as... it back. Mm -hmm. And they were like, we've made a terrible, uh, I have made a continuous lapse in my judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Tumblr was there like rubbing its face like, oh man, I'm so oh. sorry that you got offended. Yes. Ah, oh, someday, not not today, we should we should do a tier list of YouTuber apologies. Mm. I think I think we should. I think, that that, I think that that I it's also one of those things that because so many people have done apologies that now people know what apologies should and shouldn't sound like. Mm -hmm. First of all, if you're pulling out the uke, then you've yeah. got <laughs> that, that's in a realm, that's in a realm of its own. That's an alternate <laughs> dimension. But now people are like, oh, okay, so take take full responsibility. Mm -hmm. Don't shirk the blame to somebody else. Don't say sorry if you got offended. Mm -hmm. Like, you just own up to what you did. You address the things people are actually mad about. I think that Colleen's apology shouldn't, you know, it should be, it the it should be named something else. Like, a, a, what's a good yeah. name for a musical apology? <laughs> Plus, an apology video should have an I'm sorry in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think... <laughs> I don't think hers one. had a single I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Um, so... Let us Her should just be like midlife crisis, the musical. Yeah. Or like, no one. It should be called "No One Says No to Me." <laughs> yeah. Fuck it, we Bollinger. <laughs> oh, that's what the name should be. <laughs> oh man, she should change the Bollinger the title. is life. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Fuck. You should. You should have your your people connect with her people. Um, and say, hey, I'm, I think there should be a title I'm thinking change. of... <laughs> I'm thinking of going... Well, she doesn't have the video up anymore, does she? Does she not? I wouldn't if I were her. <laughs> I thought that it was still slapping around. Let's find out. Unless she's kept it up and then uploaded another video saying, whoops. Because hmm. uh, otherwise, that's just... No. It, wait. Hold on. Yeah, it's still up, baby. 17 million views. Ugh. 156,000 likes, 2.1 million dislikes. <laughs> oh. Uh, Who's liking that video? I Some kids who are like, <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, but it's still up oh, in its man. entirety. Hmm. It's just called hi, period. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That's how you know it's a serious video when they put the full stop in the title. Mm-hmm. Just like, That's uh, how you know my one will be real and not clickbait when I say addressing the controversy. Period. 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 It just adds a whole new. Hoof. Hoof. Hi, baby. I'm thinking if I go on tour again ever, I should make the I'm sorry tour, and it should just be the whole show should just be a parody of apologies. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's good. And like halfway through you just pull out the ukulele and be like just to keep your attention <laughs> subway surfer comes on and the projector behind you <laughs> oh man that's such a funny bit for a tour having subway surfers behind you the, <laughs> the whole time was... have you ever googled your name and then you realize there's way more information about you on that 
than you ever thought possible. Sometimes whole locations show up. I've had a problem in the past where people, when I lived in Ireland, people could just Google my name and it would show my address where I lived and people would show up at my door all the time. You can have your full name, your email, your home address, health records, your relatives, your dog, your cat, your GPS location, your blood type. It's all out there. People are selling your data all the time. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to get you. So you need to pay attention to this sponsor, which is Aura. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam that I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. I value my privacy, and I value yours. So you can go to aura.com slash brainleak to start your two-week free trial, also linked below in the description. But if you're just listening to the podcast, that's aura.com slash brainleak to get a 14-day free trial and see how much of your data is being sold. <laughs> I was thinking of that. I wanted to do a thing where you like talk seriously on stage and then it's like, hey, 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 pay attention. And then you just put Subway Surfer up or like clips of Family Guy or uh, cars falling down hills in GTA. Yep. Oh, I do love those videos, though. Oh, there's yeah. I have so many Beeman G Drive videos that come up of yeah. cars trying to go through things. and Oh, it's great. Yeah, it's like. On Earth's gravity, a ball, it crushes it. On yeah. Mars' gravity, uh, it crushes it a little bit. It's so cool. On Jupiter, <laughs> boom! <laughs> it's so awesome. Or the... I, my whole feed was Jaden Williams at one point, driving down the street, being like, we're going to get there soon, kids, and then crashing. <laughs> <laughs> and then my favorite one is him, like, crashing, and he pretended to, like, the, float in the air. Yeah, in the... <laughs> or the one where he drowns. He fake drowns. Yeah. And just, just, like, slowly floating up. <laughs> So there's so many people trying to emulate it now, but a little segue here. We're talking about how, you know, we as a society can't focus uh, and especially yeah. young people can't focus. Uh, so I have a little game for us to play because I okay. I was I was thinking earlier uh, this week. I just went and visited my nephew for the first time and I was like, <gasps> wow, this is amazing. And also I'm getting older. Whoa. It'll be crazy to see this little kid age. And so I was thinking, I'm coming up on 30. You're years and years I'm, past. Dude, I can't even see the hill. I'm so far away. I know. So I thought that we should take some quizzes about Gen Z slang. And we should Ooh. see we should see how well we can do. I made a random TikTok video the other day. And someone was like, man... Ethan's really pulling up with that millennial pause. I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, I know what that is. I don't know what the millennial pause is, but it made me feel old. Yeah, it, that that's like getting called boomer these days. And the other, the one that I don't understand is phantom tax. I don't know what that means. I don't know what phantom tax is. <laughs> I don't know what that means at all. She like she pulled out her gat for the Rizzler. Oh, I know what that is. She's so phantom tax. I, I have no idea what phantom tax is. Wait, what is the millennial pause? It's because when we used to record stuff on phones and stuff back in the day or cameras, you, when you press record, there would be a gap and then you would be able to start speaking. Because if you start speaking immediately, it would cut you off. Oh. But now modern stuff like modern phones and Snapchat and TikTok and everything just records you immediately as soon as you hit record. So it's almost like you need to like hit record and start talking at the same time. But millennials don't know that because we grew up in an era where you had to pause first and then recording started. What? <laughs> what? Yeah. It's like if you press like record on your DSLR or whatever, they'll be like, like if you start talking immediately, it probably won't pick it up. But on your phone, it will pick you up immediately now. Same with like audio messages. I'll like press to do an audio message <laughs> yeah. and then I'll wait a couple of seconds to be like, I don't want you to miss the start of my message. So, How, but I have to gather my thoughts for a second though. Also, okay. like, what do people not? Why would you start talking immediately? That doesn't make any sense. Why do you not know what you're going to say until you've hit record? <laughs> well, <laughs> Improv, that, that's baby. not a millennial thing, that's an Ethan thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> zip zap zap. All right. Your brain just Fuck. doesn't connect. That makes me upset. I don't like it. I don't. Well, hold on. I also want to. Well, no. We'll we'll do the quizzes and then we'll I, find I out what phantom tax is. <laughs> I think sometimes they do say millennial pause just to get under your skin. Yeah. Sometimes I think there's not even that much of a pause, mm -hmm. but they'll say it as like an okay boomer kind of thing. I'm a little bit afraid of these quizzes. I'm a little bit afraid. I think some of them will be uh, will be a little bit easier. Um, I'm gonna start off uh, with one that looks a little bit easier. Some of them I've looked through, others I haven't. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any of these. It's fine. Just the just answers. pull the ripcord. All right, ready to go. We're gonna start pull the parachute. off. Uh, I think this one's gonna be a little bit easier. This is from good old BuzzFeed, okay? Oh, classic, BuzzFeed are legit. Classic BuzzFeed quiz, all right? So, again, this one's gonna be a little bit easier. What does no cap mean? I mean, that means that you're not lying. Oh, this is multiple choice. I'll give you the, <laughs> the choices. The subject is okay. not wearing a cap. Someone lost the cap to their drink. No guns allowed. Okay. Or no lie or for real. Did that say no guns allowed? Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I'd say no lie. Mm -hmm. A cap is a lie. I don't know why a cap is a lie. I don't know how that started. I don't know why either. That is correct. All right, this one hey. you'll, you'll absolutely know. What does sus mean? Abbreviation of suspicious or suspect? Modern way of saying SOS? A popular streetwear brand, or what boomers called people named Susan. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Sus? <laughs> What's up, Suze? <laughs> so oh man, my sister's name is Susan. I'm gonna call her Sus from now on. Just <laughs> call her Sus. I mean, we both know from playing Among Us, it means that you're like suspicious or suspect. Mm -hmm. We would, I would say that growing up, that's not even like an Among Us thing. We would say that's so sus. Like even when I was a kid. Really? Oh, I didn't start and hearing lit. that until Among Us. Lit, I would heard before, but but lit, know. I've been saying since I was like like ten. That's lit. Saying like keep her lit. Ooh. People would say that in Ireland. Ooh. Like keep keep the fuel going, keep the engine going, keep her lit. Keep her lit, baby. Sucking on diesel is another one. <laughs> Fire I, sucking diesel. I love sucking <laughs> diesel. That's so good. Which I don't get. Why why is it sucking diesel? Like aren't petrol cars faster? It's like now we're sucking petrol should be like, here we go. Maybe not these days, but growing up, petrol cars are always like the fast ones. Well, diesel's more like specialized, maybe. Do they use diesel in like race cars? I have no idea. That's the thing. I think nowadays it's probably different, but I remember growing up, it was like electric cars and diesel cars were like the slower ones mm -hmm. or probably maybe more efficient. And then petrol was just like burning through the fuel fast to go faster. I don't know. Whatever. Continue. I don't know. Uh, what does bop mean? A type of insect, a really good song, something that is vintage in a cool way, or a sport in Ireland. Is that what it said? <laughs> yeah, it says a sport in Ireland. A sport in <laughs> Ireland? Why are you... Hmm, BuzzFeed, do you think that we go around, Ha, ah, jazz is popping and hopping. <laughs> um, I mean, it's a song, right? That's not a Gen Z thing. That's... It's a really good song. A bop has been around since, like, the 60s, I'd imagine. Yeah. Since the 20s, probably. Yeah, that sounds like an old thing. Honestly, here's the thing Gen Zers mm -hmm. and it's the same thing happened to Millennials We all grew up and it was like this is our fashion. This is our sound to be fair We did have a lot of new stuff like pop bands and everything were a big thing as a Millennial, mm -hmm. but Gen Z people are just going through that cycle again. It's like new youtubers who are like, oh my god Did you guys know this happened? It's like people have been doing this for since the start of the platform You don't realize that you're not new at it. Do you think that that'll happen with Let's Plays? <laughs> We're gonna go so far around that people just are like, "Did you guys know that you can record video games and you <laughs> put your little face in the corner?" <laughs> yeah, we'll get so far where it's like it's all demonetized, it's all copyright until the point where it like runs out and it comes back again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but Gen Z people, your fashion, your sp well, some of your slang is actually it's so fucking weird. Mm -hmm. But some of the stuff that you're into, it's probably just a cycle from before. Yes. And that's what happened with millennials, too. Yeah, um, anyway. When something slaps, what does that mean? To hit across the face, to make something levitate. An expression used when a plant is dying, okay? An expression of Dude, how this plant good slaps. <laughs> plant <laughs> slaps. An expression of how good something is. 
how good something is. How Some of these just is. don't even make any sense. You'd yeah. be able to guess this. Again, this is the this is the easy quiz. Uh, okay. What does it mean when someone says facts? We we'll just we'll speed through these because we know what this is. So this is a truth, right? It's like that's yeah. that's real. Uh, that's facts. What does it mean when someone says go off? Go for it. <laughs> like yeah. this is the type of thing where it's like I know what it means, but how do I explain it? I guess go off, King. What like say have... your truth. Say whatever you want. Yeah. What they have is Let encouraging someone to keep saying what they're saying. We got it. We nailed it. We're cool. What happens when Hip. someone says mood to something uh, you say? It's like, yeah, that's that's the same feeling. I feel, I feel similar. Mm -hmm. Or like, that's, that's a whole ass mood. <laughs> You're representing a whole feeling right now. And the last one is uh, the vibes are immaculate. <laughs> oh, dude. If the vibes are off, if the vibes aren't immaculate in here, I'm out. Oh, Baby. I mean, it's good atmosphere. Good, good vibes. Okay, we got an eight out of eight on the BuzzFeed quiz. So you're going to say eight out of ten, and I was like, excuse me. Have you ever talked to a person and you're like, man, they're not listening to me. The amount of times I say stuff and it's going in one ear, swirling around in that mess, and then coming out the other ear and not a single bit of it retained? Well, that's fine with friends, but you don't want that with a doctor. If you're telling a doctor what's wrong with you, you want to be able to say it properly and they'll hear you and listen to you and give you stuff that you need. That's where, that's where mm -hmm. ZocDoc comes in. That was my segue <gasps> into, into a ZocDoc thing. <laughs> I like the name. Let me, ZocDoc. Let me you. Say it. Say it. It's I, fun. ZocDoc. Ooh. That's a place baby, where you can I find and book that. doctors who will make you feel comfortable and actually listen to you. And we're not talking about just a couple of doctors. They've got tens of thousands of doctors, all with verified patient reviews, so you can make sure the vibes are vibing before yeah. you even meet them in the real world. It's hard to find doctors out there, you know? It's tough. I always see whenever we go to L.A., uh, the TV is always just on in the background, and I always hear the ZocDoc ad. or like, get your docs in a row. And then the doctor's like speaking her language, and I'm like, whoa, what a catchy jingle. It's stuck on my head now. What a catchy tune. Wow. Look, there's a lot of things you compromise in your life. Your health should not be one of them. You should be going to a doctor, qualified professionals who understand you, who get you, give you the treatment that you need, that you deserve. ZocDoc can help you with that. Mm -hmm. And you can search by location, by insurance, availability, so there are no compromises there. You can figure out everything that you need to make sure that your doctor is right for you. Yeah. So! ZocDoc is a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Mm -hmm. Go to ZocDoc. Go to it's Zoc a hard. Doc. It's a ZocDoc.com. ZocDoc.com. Com. ZocDoc.com slash BrainLeak and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then you find and book a top rated doctor today. Yeah. And just in case you missed it, because he can't speak, it's Z O C D O C, ZocDoc.com slash BrainLeak. Try it again once more. Z O C. No, don't spell it. Say it. ZocDoc.com. That's a tongue twister. That's a tongue twister. So now we will go to the slightly harder <laughs> things. Uh, which of the following is another word for uncool? Skirt, bet, or chuggy? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what is happening? I don't know what chuggy is. I mean, I'm going to assume that it's. I'm going to say that. Chuggy. Uh, and people are probably like, it's pronounced chuggy, idiot. <laughs> chuggy? C-H-E-U-G-Y? Chuggy. Chuggy. Is that correct? Uh, let's find out. Oh, we don't know until the end. Oh, God. Chuggy. Because skirt is like skirt, skirt. Like a car, <laughs> like, yeah, skirting around a corner, or like the sound it makes. I'm going to, I'm going right? to say, yeah, I think so. I don't think that you would... It, uh, it's actually the skirting boards in your house. <laughs> uh, next one is asking if something uh, slaps. Uh, what does snatched mean? Stolen, fierce, or on point, or exhausted? I think it's fierce or on point, right? Right? 
See, now this is where it could be turned, like, Depends what it was context. versus what it is. Context is Because, like, someone, someone, like, snatching a wig, like, oh, my wig got snatched, is a popular phrase. And that's to take something, to steal something. Or maybe something is so fierce that, like, now it's become, like, fetch or something, where it's, like, oh. it's actually taken on a different meaning, and now I actually don't know what it means. I... It's, it's fierce, <laughs> it's cool, like... It's snatched. She, She's so snatched. <laughs> oh, people are gonna make and, fun of oh. us! People are gonna make fun of us! I don't care if people make fun of us. This is not the language I use in my day-to-day -day life, but I'm gonna figure it out. What were the options again? Uh, stolen. Fierce or on point or exhausted. I don't think it's exhausted. Although- Is fierce and on point one answer together? Yeah. I would still say stolen. Okay. But you might be right with fierce and- Oh, it does tell Let's you just... if it's wrong. Okay. Uh, yes, the, it is fierce or on point is the correct. Okay, good. See, this is where it gets you, because I'm going for the literal translation, but I can't think literally. I literally can't think. I, I literally have to get out of my own brain right now. Which of the following means a look or style that is extremely fashionable or sexy? Bussin, bet, or drip? It's drip, right? Drip. Yeah. But you're... But it, could your style be bussin? I think that your style could be bussin. <laughs> <sighs> what does bussin come from? Busting? Yeah. Maybe, uh, that, uh, that's I, what I assume. I have no idea. I think the thing about a lot of Gen Z slang is that a lot of it comes from Ebonics, doesn't it? And um, I forget the acronym for it, like, like African-American slang. Mm -hmm. And then it's like translated into the zeitgeist. It's A-A-V, A A A V E. I, and, yeah. Yeah. It's like African-American vernacular the E doesn't start for Ebonics. Does it? Oh my god, I'm so I have no all idea. over the place. Um, but yeah, a lot of it comes from that. And then it just, like, the, it's saying something for real. Mm. Like, it all just translates out of that. And now Gen Z just say it all the time. I also like the the word zeitgeist. I think it's fun. Yeah, it's fun I use that word a lot. Zeitgeist. That's why a lot of people are probably like, I've used these words my entire life growing up. It's not a Gen Z thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one about uh, Cap. Again, so we know what that is. We know uh, cap. Which of the following words is an insult for men who are seen as being too submissive to women? Oh, we know this. Can't say this on Twitch. Oh. Simp. Oh, simp. Hell yeah, dude. Is simp, is simp, I'm assuming, is short for simpleton, which I always thought. I've never thought about that, actually. I would, well, but like, hmm. I, Maybe? But I don't know if that's right. But that doesn't necessarily makes sense, doesn't yeah, it? Simp, simp is in the dictionary? A silly or foolish person. But isn't it supposed to be, like, if you're a simp? Someone with excessive sympathy. Oh. Wait, but it also had originally a shortening of simpleton. The new Partridge Dictionary of Slang and Unconventional English traces usage of the noun simp to 1903. You know what is uh, something that I think about all the time? Um, and it's it's something that's I've been learning about a little bit more uh, because I've been trying to uh, brush up on my Spanish um, recently. And mm. Jocelyn, who works with me, speaks Spanish. Um, but it's really interesting just seeing like the different slang that's used depending on the country that you're from. Because she's from Mexico, yeah. so she's like, we were watching a movie the other day where people were speaking Spanish, but they were from Uruguay. And so she was like, yeah, like some of this stuff, I have no idea what they're saying because it's just like different, different slang. So it's, wow. it would mean something completely different. Um, and so that's very interesting. Kind of. Yeah. Cool. Everyone has their own slang. Mm -hmm. All right. This one, I, like I know what it means, but the options that are given, um, I think could all apply. What does hit Ooh. different mean? It's weird or unusual. It's confusing or nonsensical. Or it has a marked effect or influence. I think probably I'd say marked last. effect or influence. Yeah. Like this hits different. Like this, everything else is normal. Mm -hmm. This is completely different from those. Uh, like Sean and Ethan's podcast, that hits different. That hits those vibes different. are immaculate. Oh, hell yeah, dude. That is correct. Woo! Ooh. Let's go! Which one of the following means I've got the point? Low key, say less, or cap? Say less, I'd say. Say less. All right. Like you don't need to keep going. Last two. I think we're on a good track. We've only gotten one wrong. Uh, what does bet mean? 
cool or I'm down. No lie or not cool. It's like cool. I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 I'm I'm trying to find out the etymology of these. Is this that like I'm so sure of it? I would place a bet on it. I think so. That makes okay. sense. Because um, I would like to extrapolate these out into their full sentences, which is like, ha ha, simpleton. <laughs> and like, yeah, I'm so down, I would place a bet on that. <laughs> that makes sense. That's how you become, the, you become the dad of the group. And the last one, this one's easy. Which of the following means relaxing or tapping into good feelings? That's vibing. Nice. Vibing. We got nine out of tapping ten. Tapping into good feelings. Nice. Nice. All right. Now, the last one that I have, the title was very Gen Z. Gen Z. very convincing. Nobody over 25 will pass this Gen Z slang quiz. That's the title of this episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are going to start this quiz. We're going to find out if we can do it. So just, just to sound off, I'm in like... A week and a half, I'll be 34 years old as of recording this episode. Mm -hmm. So I'm well beyond. I'm almost 10 years over the 25-year mark. Yes. So I could be way off. You're like three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm 27. So you you should be... You're 27? Yeah. I thought you were 28. No, I'm 27. Oh, God, you're even younger than I thought. I'm sorry. Christ. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're only two years off then. Uh-huh. Only two years. So you should be able to like... Figure these out. You should be able to suss these out. I should. Oh, a different word. Uh, 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 um, usage. Usage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> also, I think that us being creators uh, gives us benefit as well because yeah. we're on social media. Well, people are. Creators oh, with benefits. Yeah, creators with benefits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what does. Uh, what are you doing if you're spilling the tea, cleaning a room, working hard? Oh, you're hard. gossiping. Oh, yeah, baby. Gossiping. Next question. Got him. Lock it in. What does it mean if something is basic, easy, juvenile, unoriginal, or funny? I'd unoriginal. say unoriginal. Yeah. Because you're not unique. You don't stand out. You're fucking basic-ass vanilla bitch. Correct. Okay. Yeah. That's us right here. Two basic bitches. What is? Two white dudes at a podcast. <laughs> Can't get more basic than that, baby. <laughs> what is a whip, a face, a foot, whipped car. cream, or a car? Yes, we're killing Hell yeah, it. pulling up my whip. Okay. Is that, have you ever seen that volume where the guy's like, I'm a finna whip this hoe. And then he like <laughs> drives off. And he's like 12 years old. No. And, you know, he just cuts to the car like drifting there. <laughs> oh, we have to see that one. Uh, when something uh, is extra, it's very popular. When it costs more than it's supposed to, when there's more than one of something, or when something is extravagant and flamboyant. Extravagant and flamboyant. Extravagant and flamboyant. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, explain the Someone term who's extra. bop. We already got that. A good song. Try to guess what wig means. A cap made of hair. Scared. Amazing. Angry. Uh, a cap, a cap made of made hair? Of... <laughs> it is not. It's amazing. What? I'm sorry. <laughs> what? I I need I've this heard... used in a sentence. Yeah. Okay. What does it mean? Wig is a Gen Z phrase that is usually made to refer to something that is amazing or exciting. It comes from the idea that someone is so blown away that their wig flew off. Oh my god. <laughs> I do need to hear that in a sentence. Like How would that be used? Can you say that's so wig or like <laughs> How are people saying wig? I don't wiggity, know. wiggity. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God, that one makes me feel old. Yeah. I'm so glad I don't hang out with any children. <laughs> it looks bad as a YouTuber if you do that anyway, so. This, uh, okay. Uh, have you heard of and I oop? It's making a mistake, a recipe yeah. for pasta when your hair is done, or a funny meme. And I oop? It's a funny meme, right? It is a funny meme, but it could also be... Making a mistake. Yeah, yeah, I th I'd say it's a funny meme. It is making a mistake. This phrase might seem strange, but it's quite popular. And I oop is meant to be said when someone makes an insignificant mistake, such as dropping their phone. But it comes from a meme, doesn't it? It comes from that meme. And I oop. And, and I, or I guess they go, oop, jump scare. Because I, I was going to say a mistake, but I was like, no, I think we're going to get caught out if we just say that. Because the other ones I'm thinking too literally. I think that we could argue 
for our case here. I think that we were works. we were thinking that one, but because mm -hmm. I got wig wrong, it threw me off. Like my wig got snatched. I can't say that. We all know about VPNs these days. If you want to watch movies or TV shows in a region that is not available to you, we use it all the time at home to watch a load of horror movies that don't always release in the UK. So me and Evelyn go and we use NordVPN. We hook that up. We go find the movie that we want. But also NordVPN can save you money because if you want to buy stuff online, let's say you're booking flights, hotels, rental cars specifically, you can use NordVPN to look for that stuff in the region so that you can get cheaper prices because these places are always trying to price gouge you They're always trying to get more money out of you And if they know you're coming out of town and you're planning a trip You might be willing to spend that little bit extra so you can use NordVPN to actually save money Not only that but NordVPN have upgraded their suite of features. So now they actually have stuff uh, that secures passwords. They have Nord Locker that secures files. They also have NordVPN's threat protection feature, so it can detect when something is actually coming in, like malicious malware or viruses. So NordVPN is a really one-stop shop for you if you have any sort of computer at all, or even a phone. They have it on phones now as well. It's super easy. I love using it. It's the fastest VPN on the on the web. So if you want to take a veil of this plan, go to nordv nordvpn.com slash brain. Sorry, I just ate. I can't speak. Our, our link will also give you four extra months on the two-year plan. There's no risk with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, and you'll help support the podcast as well. Link is in the podcast episode description box. But if you're just listening to the podcast, you can go to nordvpn.com slash brain to try risk-free now. Go, go, go! Do you know what woke means? Aware of social injustice? Yeah, it's a virus that people get. <laughs> the woke mind <laughs> virus. <laughs> that makes them want nothing but representation and everything. And then everyone's like... <laughs> okay, this is this is not Gen Z. Uh, what does TBH stand for? Um, I really like the options, though. So it's to be honest. Um, uh -huh. Okay, that is correct. So I was like, it fucking better be. <laughs> if, they, if Gen Z have turned TBH into something else, I'm going to be pissed. Um, try being hot. They both heard or the best house. <laughs> <laughs> We're heading over to Kyle's TBH. <laughs> the best house. Fuck yeah. I'm also convinced that every Gen Z person is named like 90s uh, Saved by the Bell characters. Mm -hmm. Like, Gen Z are like a Zach. Yeah. Austin. Mm -hmm. You know a Zach and an Austin. I do. Are they Gen Z? Uh, no. They're both millennials. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm sorry. That would have made my case so much stronger, but now it's falling apart like a house of cards. Um, are you familiar with ghosting? Yes. Getting scared. That being means to ignored. not talk to somebody. I'm going to go out and extrapolate on this, which is that you don't answer someone back, which is, means that you're practically dead to them. Yeah. So you're a ghost. So you're ghosting them. Exactly. Uh, what does swole mean? Judge Huge. Judgmental. Hench. Swollen. Smart. Or buff. Big buff boys. Buff. Buff, baby. Big booty buff bitches. Can you decipher fit? Being in shape, being prepared, a clothing size, or an outfit. It's an outfit. Yeah, but over here, saying something, someone is fit, fit means bird. that they're attractive. That's a fit bird right It's there. a fit bird. Mm -hmm. So, this is an American test, so that's why I'm failing. The sun was in my eyes. They were much bigger than me. They go to a different school. <laughs> Keep it coming. I like this. Guess what finna means? Fantastic. I'm going to. Planning something? I would say planning something, yeah? I think. Yes. I used to... I, the reason I thought finna was gonna... Mm -hmm. Is that I used to think that people misspelled gonna in their phones or something, but I think it's short for I'm fitting to. I'm fitting to go outside. I w and then it got shortened to finna, right? I, uh, I'm fitting to burst. It doesn't give me... It doesn't give me uh, yeah. its beginnings. Finna is a slang term short for fixing to or going to. Fuck yeah. Oh, Not only do baby. I know this slang, I know what it comes from. You know where it's coming from. Oh, my nipples are singing. Uh, translate the Gen Z, the Gen Z term Luke, L-E-W-K. Staring at something, a special outfit, feeling confident, eyes. I'd say a special outfit. I'd say a special outfit. Like, that's a look. Yes. Let's go! Yes, baby. It's a look. Oh! If I had kids, they'd be so proud of me. Okay. Try to guess what beat means. 
a vegetable aggressive, aggressively applying makeup, stepping on the ground, the sound of music. I'd say the sound of... That's not a Gen Z thing. The sound of music, right? <laughs> no, it's not the sound of music. What? <laughs> the slang term beat may sound a bit alarming, but there really isn't any harshness in its meaning. Beat is defined as aggressively applying makeup to get a bold look. I I'm so confused. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? Does it mean that you've rubbed so much blush on your face that you might as well be rubbing beets? I don't, I, I I guess? need sentences. I can't just hear, oh, beat. What are you doing right now? I'm beating my face. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Uh, That's a sick beat. You can't take words and redefine what they mean. Uh, but, uh, but, I, uh, but that's what happens. That's like saying, oh, cool actually is an acronym now for uh, celiacs on our lawn. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, can you explain a glow up? Arriving early to something, something that glows in the dark, viral video, or a makeover transform, or a makeover or transformation. It's transformation. A transformation. People have posted so many times about our glow ups. Yes, the glow which, up. Which, like, pose for the camera right now. Do your smolder. Oh. <laughs> What a glow up. I want somebody to put like an edit together of us just like mm. uh, But you gotta do the like just how fast the night changes and it's like us being like What is up my cranky crew and uh -huh. top of the morning to you ladies and that's like what a glow up and it's just the two of us uh, oh, what uh, uh, Um finna steal your girl. I'm excited about no this cap. one about this one so we okay. can explain to people where this came from what is because I feel like a lot of Gen Z people actually don't know where this came from What is a stan? Uh. It's an obsessive fan, but Everyone listening that term comes from the Eminem song Stan Yeah, because it's uh, the whole song is uh, his name is Stan and he's a stalker. Yeah, and he's like a super feverish fan mm -hmm. so if you're so overboard, you're bordering stalking and writing letters and needing a restraining order, then you're a stan. Yeah. You're not, it's not just because it rhymes with fan and it's like a different version of that. Mm -hmm. You're literally a person. It's like saying, you're such a Frank. <laughs> <laughs> you're such a Frank. And it could have been that. It could have been that. Yeah. Um, I would argue that stan is a millennial thing because the start of YouTube. I would say that, yeah. Is happening for like the millennials. Mm -hmm. Like Gen Z rules YouTube now. Like they're the audience that YouTube caters to. Mm -hmm. Gen Alpha soon. But I was about to bring actually, up. Actually, Ryan's Alpha. toy reviews, that's all Gen Alpha. <laughs> yeah. And Gen Alpha are gonna come up with such fucking weird words, like that's so sill. And people would be like, <laughs> What? What? You mean like and the, the the Gen Z people are gonna have a podcast and they're gonna be like, it means silly, right? Like it's short for silly. And they'd be like, no, it actually stands for windowsill, and it's so chill that you just sit on the windowsill <laughs> to hang out. That's so good. We should make sill a thing. I just thought of that because I saw your windowsill in the background, and mine is like right next to me. And cool is celiacs on our lawns. <laughs> They're all over the place. They're all over the Looking place. Looking for gluten-free food. Oh, <laughs> um... Okay, do you know what bruh means? Either soft, adventurous, teen, or friend. It's just friend, right? I, it's, I mean, it's bro, yeah. but it's just the way the guy said it in the video, where he like collapsed and goes, bruh. <laughs> that is true. It's just a friend. Imagine being that person that came up with a new word, or like, like I guess you didn't come up with it, because people in his background and his culture and his life and his friend group and everything are probably all saying bruh all the time. Mm hmm but he said it in a, and it went viral. So then it's just a worldwide word now. Yeah. That's crazy. That's wild. Bruh. Bruh. <laughs> Certified bruh moment. Have you heard the word bougie? Yes. Fancy. Yeah. Fancy. Which that's like a, that to me is a 1920s word. Bougie? I think. Yeah. Yeah. Where, uh, Jimmy, pull it up. Where did, where did bougie originate? Where did bougie I used to think it was associated with the term bourgeoisie, but I don't think that it is. It's like a 1920s or a 1950s word. Yes, that is bougie and bougie are similar. Uh, there's two different spellings. Are similar terms uh, with subtle but significant differences. Uh, both ultimately come from the 16th century French term bourgeoisie. Oh, bah, 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 nailed bah, 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 bah. it. 
So if you're bougie, you're part of the bourgeoisie. So you're meaning you're part of the elite, the luxurious. The luxurious. Dude, I'm fucking nailing this etymology. Language is my fucking forte. Um, there's a few. That, that means I'm... strength <laughs> in French. What is Gen Z's definition of fire? Cool, dangerous, spicy, warm. Cool, baby. Cool. Which is the opposite of what it right? sounds like. <laughs> Isn't that it's one? fire. Okay. Dude, the Antarctic is so fire. <laughs> Okay, this this one I'm a little scared of. I think I, I'm almost positive, but it's one of those things where I'm like, I never asked, so I'm I'm not sure. Uh, do you know what TFW stands for? This friend won the fun way. That feeling when try feeling weird. It's that feeling when. That feeling when. Right. Okay. Yes. Correct. Okay. That face when. <laughs> oh, man. Well, there's... Because there's... MFW is my face when. Uh, like, JFC, that's... Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah, right? Okay, good. But sometimes I'm like, hmm, what if it's not? <laughs> what if it's something else? I'm worried that I'll say a term that sounds like fun and a lot of people use, and then I find out that it's, like, horrifically racist or mm. homophobic or something, and I'm like... I didn't realize everyone who was using it was using it in a bad way. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, what does savage mean? Dirty, harsh, hungry, or simple? Wait, what? Oh, harsh, right? Harsh. Yeah. Again, that's another one I've been saying in Ireland since I was like six years old. Savage? Oh, class, deadly, savage. Irish people are just the Gen Z people from the past. That's savage. Do you know what trolling is? But it didn't mean, is? that means something was cool. It didn't mean that that was something harsh when I grew up. So it's like, look at that tractor over there. That's savage. Oh, yeah. Wait. Yeah. That is true. These words, their meanings, they're changing. I don't like it. Can you describe low-key, discreet, scared, bold, smug? This one's kind of self-explanatory. Discreet. Discreet. I wonder what low-key comes from, though. But what about high-key? Hmm? Uh, that's the end of a piano. Ooh. Well, Okay. Being really Wait, is high key the next question? High key is the next question, yeah. Oh, I thought you were just uh, top notch trying to be the best, very important, or being really into something. This one's actually like kind of hard. High key. It's high key. That's that's high key. Top notch and very important are like the same thing. Yeah. Uh one is just fancier. <laughs> it's high key. I'd say How do you describe high key? I would say very important. Very important and top notch are the same. Something is top notch or very important. I, I need. I can't even think of a sentence with high key in it. I'm high key depressed as fuck right now. <laughs> I'm high. I'm high key finna oh, bust. <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, about to bust. Oh, man, being really un. It's. I'm high key into this. This is. Give me the options again. Top notch, trying to be the best, very important, or being really into something. Being really into something. That's correct. Go yeah. On. I literally just answered my own question by using a <laughs> example sentence. Yeah. Have you heard of a clap back responding to an insult with an insult? That's that's what. That yeah, is. that's it. <laughs> what is SMH? So you stand get you for? get slapped and then you clap back. Again, this one is not. Gen Z, SMH, shaking my head. Suck my hole. Uh, do you know what quaking means? Someone who can't quaking in my sit boots. still, relaxed, insane, or surprised? Um, <laughs> I would have said quaking is like scared. He's quaking right now. S so like he's surprised? scared of what you just did. Would we, would we say surprised? Scared is not an option, is it? No. Scared's not there. Someone who can't sit still, relaxed, insane, or surprised. I'd say surprise out of those options. Surprise, yes, okay. I was really worried where I was like, is it someone who can't sit still because they're quaking like an earthquake? <laughs> <laughs> someone who has ADHD, it's like, I can't just sit and watch an episode of The Sopranos. I need I'm quaking, Subway dude. Surfer at the same time. I'm quaking right now. I'm quaking for a Klondike bar. <laughs> <laughs> Guess the meaning of hype beast. Charismatic, confident, tacky, trendy. Just trendy, trendy. right? Yeah. Trendy. Okay. Yeah, because hype beast is like a movement of clothing. All right, goat greatest of all time. Um, yeah, I'm very curious if Gen Z people don't realize that that's an acronym. Like he's the goat, which is an acronym of greatest of all time. Also, this is very funny because it's like this is a Gen Z thing, 
but it says here, oftentimes sports stars or celebrities are called the, the GOAT. This stands for greatest of all time. USA Today says the earliest example was in 1992. That's millennial. Yeah. So get fucked, Gen Z. Get fucked, Gen Z, you get stupid unemployed bitches. <laughs> <laughs> going to college, getting a degree so you can't fucking work for anything because they need 15 years of experience. For what? Fucking idiots. For what? Become a YouTuber. I feel like I need to bring up a fucking Irish slang quiz oh, for everybody at home. Man. Man. We we should do that. We should. Should we do it now? Yeah, why not? Also, I'm sad that Riz didn't come up. Because I had to explain what Riz was to Aaron. <laughs> well, we're only 70%. <clears throat> oh, we should finish this out then. Okay. Uh, what is skirt? When something is really cool, a slang way to spell skirt. Uh, that's not a word. Or an automatopoeia of tire screeching. It is tire screeching, right? Didn't we find out in the last quiz that it was something was cool? It's skirt? That's not a Gen Z thing. Uh, I, uh, That's been in like hip hop for years. <laughs> what does it mean when someone understood the assignment? A term used to refer to a nerd, someone who gets really good grades in school, when someone was really successful at a, at a task, or someone who's really smart. It's successful. Third, third one. Yeah. Yes. At a task, yeah. Correct. They understood the assignment, which means they did well on it. Uh, so slams. Already this is that. like. This is like two dads hanging out one evening because they have no idea what their kids have been talking about. So they're like, dude, we, uh, Frank, we got to fucking brush up on our slang. I have no idea what my kids are saying when they come home from school. They said school was so phantom tax and I thought they had to pay money. <laughs> Ready for this one? You just heard yeah. someone got canceled. Mm. Oh, they got put in a can and shipped out to the ocean. That's right. When a person, celebrity, company, or organization gets shamed for something and boycotted. Uh-huh. Here's a gamer one. When someone types the, the letters... <laughs> I just were going to say, what does the N-word mean? <laughs> when someone types oh. the letter W, what are they trying to say? It's short for a win. <laughs> that's a W, and right. that's why people say dub. That's the dub. That's W. And did you know that the word, the letter W... Is supposed to be a double U, and that's why it's called that, because it comes from French double V, which is double V. I mean, I did assume that. <laughs> the, the uh, whatever, w okay? W I'm just trying to fucking look smart in front of my kids. <laughs> okay. They well, don't, I know their slang, but they don't know that I know other things. <laughs> I know other stuff, too. And my audience are my kids. They wish me happy Father's Day every year. When you, uh, what is a snack when you find someone attractive? A small meal in between? Two larger meals, a short person or a tall person, ironically. I know, ask Mark Wahlberg. Dude fucking <laughs> snacks all the time. Uh, it's an attractive person. Something being camp means that it's something ironic when something is odd or tacky that becomes cool, really colorful, or outdoorsy. I think it's odd or tacky and it becomes cool. When I was growing up, camp meant like flamboyant. So really colorful? I would have said so. That's... Camp. The like when I was growing up, people would say something was camp meant something was gay, right? Oh, I've never heard it used in that way. But I also oh. haven't really. It was like it was like flamboyant. It was extra, as the kids these days would say. So would we say really colorful? <laughs> That's like <laughs> yes, but I don't want to make any insinuation. It is not that. It's when something is odd or tacky and it becomes cool. Something. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What? Uh, I'm searching it. It takes something considered lousy and transforms it into something acceptable. Yeah. Over it's camp means over the top, eccentric, ridiculous, unexpected, striking out of the ordinary. What does camp mean in LGBT was the next one. Ostentatious, exaggerated, affected, theatrical, effeminate, or homosexual. Because when I was growing up, people would describe things as camp. Well then maybe Quizscape needs to do some more research. <sighs> maybe Gen Z are just changing the game. Uh, if someone tells you to take several seats, this means you're doing too much. You, uh, they want you to literally sit down, want you to leave them alone, or want you to watch them perform in a play. I Ooh, it's either they actually want you to sit down or you're doing too much. Like, have a seat. Like, sit your ass down. I think... Take several seats. You're acting so crazy that sitting down once isn't enough. You have to take several seats. So, uh, you're doing too much. You're doing much. too much. Yes, correct. Uh, My brain. 
Okay. I Y K Y K. If you know, you know. <laughs> what does it mean when some someone or something is living rent free, ironically paying too much rent? The dream uh, to live for free <laughs> when you're obsessed with something and you can't stop thinking about it. Uh, they are literally living for free without having to pay rent. When you're so obsessed with something. The, all the other three are the exact same thing, <laughs> yeah. which you could just guess what the answer is. <laughs> they couldn't even come up with different answers for it. A young person just told you, I'm dead. What do they mean? That something was so funny, they died of laughter. They are emotionally yep. numb. Yeah, it's the die of laughter. I'm, I'm dead. All right. Skull emoji now. Last question. What is a flex? Showing off. Showing off. Baby. Oh, you're showing off, bro. Look at this flex. Oh, wait. There's one more. Uh, what's a read? A book club gathering? Reading a movie That's script? What you put in your saxophone. Reading out loud or an insult? Uh, um, <laughs> hmm. What? <laughs> a read? R-E-A-D? Yeah. I'm, where, are the, where are the options? A book club gathering? Reading a movie script? Reading a book out loud or an insult? I mean, it has to be an insult, right? I'd say an insult because I don't think the others are right. Reading someone means studying uh, someone and looking at their personality flaws, bad traits, and other things you can insult them on. Oh. Damn. So you're like, I can read you like a book. You're so open. We got, you're totally a Gen Z. There's no design, denying that you're part of Gen Z. Great job. Hell yeah. Hell yeah baby. Gen Z AF. Well, real quick, I think that we should do an Irish slang quiz. So then, At you least. know, the, the whole time everyone's listening, whenever we got something wrong, they're like, oh my God, they're so old, blah, blah, blah. Let's make them feel bad. And I, myself, by proxy, also. <laughs> but let's make them feel bad yeah. about what they don't know. Yeah, about everyone Ireland. at home, play along right now. Because this is going to be one of those things, like, I can't believe they didn't know that. This is going to be one of those things that you're going to be like, I'm sorry, what? And some of these are going to be ones that you can't figure out by just hearing the words. Oh, man. I'm so there's 10 questions. Okay. Irish slang quiz. In Irish slang, mm -hmm. shifting someone means mm -hmm. kissing someone with the tongue, mm -hmm. beating someone up, lying to someone, or having sex with someone. I'm going to say lying to someone. You want to lock in lying to someone? I'm locking in lying to someone. You are incorrect. Fuck. It is kissing someone with tongue. What? <laughs> yep. And I don't know why it was called shifting someone. Other other places in Ireland would have said different terms for kissing someone with tongue. Like French kissing basically is shifting. Also, I would I would like to know is this slang actually used? Because sometimes there's stuff that'll come up like Yep. I use this growing up. It'd be like you go to a disco uh -huh. or a dance as we would have. And it'd be like, if she wants to shift you, do you want to shift her? Whoa. Okay. And then you'd be shifting. Damn. A word makes no fucking sense anymore. This doesn't tell us we're right until the very end. Okay. Um, in Irish slang, a yoke is a beer, a loaf of bread, a guy, or a thingy. <laughs> I'm going to say a yoke is a guy. It's like an ins like a, a yoke would be like kind of a dumb guy. Okay. This th I'm not actually going to give you the answers now. I'm going to let you guess all of these, and I'm going to see how many you get. Okay. So I put in your first one as lying to someone. This one you said, a guy. Okay. okay. Yep. Irish slang, uh, what does me mot mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> my mom, my car, my girlfriend, or my dog? Me mot. I'm going to say uh, my mom. It's short for mother. Okay. Uh, Irish slang, a culchy is what? A person from Dublin, a person from the countryside, a good looking person, or a terrible looking person? I'm gonna say a person from Dublin. They're a person, ah, oh, man. Because a culchy would be like culture. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Dublin because it's okay. a big <laughs> city. <laughs> okay, I, li I like how you're, you're trying to work it out in your head. Yeah. You're not just answering randomly. Uh, in Irish slang, she's going on the lash means what? She's going to bed, she's going to hunt for a lover, she's going to get drunk, or she's getting very angry. She's going on the lash. On the lash? Yeah. Uh, can I have the, the answers again? Uh, she's going to bed, she's going to hunt for a lover, she's going to get drunk, or she's getting very angry. Oh, man. <laughs>
This is fun for me. Oh, this is tough. Um, hmm. I'm going to say <laughs> hunting for a lover. Okay. You know, she's she's batting her eyelashes a lot and going, ooh, ooh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like your thinking. In Northern Irish slang, I'm foundered means I'm drunk, I'm furious, I'm exhausted, or I'm cold. I'm going to say drunk. Went out and got absolutely okay. foundered last night. Honestly, I would have said I'm drunk as well, but it could be I'm furious, mm -hmm. but I don't know. Actually, it could be any of these. <laughs> but I, I had never heard of that one before. Uh, in Irish slang, to score the face off someone means to punch them in the face, to kiss someone passionately, to humiliate someone in a mean way, or to scold someone angrily. To score the face off someone. Uh, can I have the answers one more time? To punch someone in the face, kiss someone passionately, Humiliate someone in a mean way or to scold angrily. I'm going to say to scold. Okay. You have three left. Okay. Uh, he's gone for his tea means what? He's gone to sleep. Mm -hmm. He's gone to see his mom. Mm -hmm. He's dead. Or he's gone to the... He's gone to get drunk at the pub. Gone to get his tea. He's gone for his tea. Based on stereotypes, <laughs> I want to just say that he's going to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> you can stereotype if you don't know the answer. That's fine. Uh, I I think I'm gonna be upset if it's if it's going to get drunk. I'm gonna say that he's dead because Ooh. because a lot of people will drink some sleepy time tea. Work it out. Word it out. Show they'll, show your work. They'll get some sleepy time tea right before bed. You know, yeah. you'll drink your tea and then you go down for your sleep. He's getting he's getting he's getting his tea. And he's he's going gone for the big tea. For his long nap. He's getting a big I cup see. of tea. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in Irish slang, she's away with the fairies means what? She's a bit mad. She's gone out with her girlfriends. She's high or she's sleeping soundly. I'm going to say that she's a bit mad. She's a little crazy. Yeah. In this context, mad means like crazy, insane, mm -hmm. like off your rocker. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say uh, she's and in mad. Ireland, getting the messages means what? Getting the newspaper, getting pregnant, getting the groceries or getting the mail. Getting the mail. I think. Okay, submit your score. All right. What did I get wrong? You got two out of ten correct. Fuck. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Some of these you were answering, and I was like, that's a good reasoning, but no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Let's uh, go through them. Shifting someone you know is not lying to someone. In Irish slang, a yoke is just a thing. Oh. So it's like, hand me that yoke over there. So it's like you don't know you can't think of the you can't think of the word for it. It's like a thingamajig. Oh, okay. Shit. So it's like, I don't know what it is. Give me that yoke. Mm -hmm. Uh me mot means me girlfriend. Fuck. <laughs> I do like your rationalization though that it's short for mother, because when you said that, I was like, why is it called mot? It's just M-O-T. It's not when I was younger, I was like. You mean like moth to a flame? Am I her flame? <laughs> that doesn't make sense. So she's like stuck to me? I don't I don't understand the etymology of that one. It might come from Irish. Uh, in Irish slang, a culchi is not a person from Dublin. It's a person from the countryside. Uh. Which I do like your rationalization that it's a person of culture. Uh -huh. And I think, I think, I could be way off, but I think the rationalization is that it's a person who lacks culture. So the people in Dublin have culture, so someone who without culture is a culchy. What is... Because I would be called a culchy by Dubliners all the time. What is someone from the city called? A dub. A dub. <laughs> I'm a dub. I'm, I'm sure dub. they might have a name for themselves, I don't know. I, I'm a culchy, so I just call them dubs. Uh, she's going on the lash means she's going to get drunk. Now she's going for a lover. But I also like how you said for her lashes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. That, see, a lot of this stuff makes sense. <laughs> I'm founder means I'm cold. Uh -huh. That's the one where I'm like, it definitely doesn't mean that one. But we both probably would have said I'm drunk. I'm foundered. Cold, okay. I, I You could probably Google these and it'd be like, oh, because you worked at a foundry and now you're outside and it's warm in there and it's cold out here. So I don't know. Could mean anything. Bullshit. Um, to score the face off someone is to kiss someone passionately. God damn it. <laughs> Which I guess like to score is to like have sex. Yeah. Well, so to score the face off someone is like face sex. I was like, it can't be that because we already had a kissing one. Yeah, that one threw you off for sure. Um, He's gone for his tea does mean he's dead. Yes. 
Which I I wouldn't have said that for he's gone for his tea because your tea is like your supper. It's like yeah. you go home to get your tea. You go you go home to get like your food with a cup of tea. So he's gone for his tea. I would have said like he's gone to see his mother or he's gone to the pub. Yeah. Like the, the old lad's gone for his tea. In other words, he's gone for his version of what tea is. Um, and she's away with the fairies means she's a bit mad. That one was... She's, she's away with the fairies. She's she's in another dimension. God damn it. So you're not very Irish at all at all. Not very Irish. Let me see real quick if I can get a main one. I don't know if I'll be able to. I'm curious because Maine is East Coast and a lot of like East Coast stuff like Boston, Newfoundland, all that stuff is very Irish. I'd say Ireland and Australia probably have the densest amount of slang for their countries. For like a town, like every single town in Ireland probably has its own slang for different things. Here's your main slang quiz. Some of these, okay. I don't even know. There are 12 questions. When a person is from far away, they are from outside of Maine, Massachusetts, or Canada. Someone who's far away, I don't think is from, like, it could be any of the, I'll just say Canada. If you've been invited to go sledding, what would you need to bring? A set of skis, a snowmobile, or a ski do? A ski do. Wonderful. Next question. Which of these words is used to refer to lobsters? A steamer, a skid, or a bug? Mm, a lot of people do say lobsters look like bugs. Mm -hmm. So I might go with that one, but you do steam lobster as well, so it could be a steamer. I'll go with a steamer. I like a steamer better than a bug. All right. Like, throw me over that steamer. Locking in steamer. Next question. If someone's got... If someone's car got stove up in Maine, it was snowed in, stolen, or badly damaged. Duh. Snowed in. Snowed in. I feel like you guys get a lot of snow. That time I was in Massachusetts, holy fuck. Oh, yeah, for past Boston that time? Yeah, we got so stoved in that year. What does cunning mean? Cute, clever, or weird? I'd say clever, because that's just... You cute whore. <laughs> <laughs> if, it could be that actually either cute. If you ask a Mainer to dinner and they respond that they've drove right up, then they are sick, full, or busy. Ooh, busy. I'm trying to think of the context of the situation. Again, there's there's a couple of these where I'm like, oh man, that's like real northern speak. Uh, if right. you're booking it, then you're recording the information, hurrying, or booking a hotel. Hurrying. Mm -hmm. Get him, Lou. He's bucking it. He's bucking it. What does a Mainer mean when they say chupta? How's your dad? What are you up to? Oh, or where what are, are you? you up to? You also just gave away the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh. What chupta? Chupta. Chupta. If you're having some bed lunches, what are you having? Terrible pain, a midnight snack, or a mid morning brunch? Bed munches? Bed lunches. A bed lunches? I'd say a midnight snack. Because you're going to bed and you're eating. All right. Three left. After a big snowstorm, you'd say the roads are what? Greasy, dirty, or sweaty? Ooh, greasy and sweaty sounds very similar. Mm. I'd say greasy because you're going to be slipping and sliding on the snow. I would say sweaty because it looks like sweat, but I'd say greasy because it gets all like mulchy. Greasy? What does it mean to kaif? To steal, to fly a kite, to sleep? I don't know what this one is. To steal. They misspelled knife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Ordering an Italian... Kaif sounds like a slur. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I'm like, Ugh. Ordering an Italian is the same as ordering what? Pasta, pizza, or a sub sandwich? Oh, shit. This is like over here we'd say, I'm going to order a Chinese, and then that was in the news, and everyone was like, you can't say that. It's like, everyone here says that. Like, I'm going to order... A Chinese takeout. I guess but I've I was, never thought about this outside of Maine. But now I'm like, that all three are Italian. Oh wait, Subway Sandwich. Are those Italian originally? Uh, I don't know. I'd say pizza because I feel like you will order that more than pasta. But I, pasta is more Italian to me. Anyway, how'd I do? How Mainer am I? All right. Results, baby. Oh, you got six right of the 12. So you got Ooh. half. Uh, B plus Ooh. main slang super. 
<laughs> okay. Ooh, so, I want that fucking stamp <laughs> on my paper. Uh, the first one you got wrong, where is a person from? They're just from outside of Maine. Yeah, um, that's probably more accurate of what I was thinking. If you're going sledding, you're uh, riding on a snowmobile. What? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, you almost got it with the lobster. Um, or wait, what did you say? I said oh, a bug said... and then I changed it to a steamer. Yeah, so it's it's a bug. Yeah, um, I figured. If someone's car got stove up, I also thought it was snowed in, but it's badly damaged. Yeah. The, the, all of these ones, I'm like, if I wasn't going to go for this one, I would have gone for that one. So yeah. I was like stuck between two all the time. Uh, Cunning, you said clever. It's cute. Um, yeah. I even said you cute who were right mm -hmm. after that. Because I was like, that's in Ireland, you would say that. My uh, my mom, especially, always says Conan. Um Let's see. Conan Sweebles. <laughs> Conan Sweebles. Uh, the roads you got right. That's greasy. Um Okay, the last one you got wrong. Uh, ordering an Italian, you said pizza. It's a Subway sandwich. Oh, because Italian bread. No, it, there's a sandwich called an Italian sandwich that's uh, it's like ham and cheese and a few different things. <sighs> but yeah, an Italian is a sandwich. Going to get an Italian. That's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. Well, we learned so much slang today. Yeah, I want to know if Subway sandwiches are Italian originally, like that form of a sandwich. Probably not. An American multinational, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess not. But don't they have like Italian bread and stuff? Uh, yeah, they're usually served on Italian. Comes from Connecticut? No one knows anything about Connecticut. Other than Subway, what do you know about Connecticut? Apart from the fact that it's pronounced Connecticut. <laughs> uh, I have, I don't know anything about Connecticut. What's the main town in Connecticut? I would say Hartford. I think is the is the. I just realized capital. I have no idea any, like <laughs> Tulsa and Oklahoma, like those types of things I know because of friends, but I don't know anything about Connecticut. I I pulled up a main slang, uh, uh, like a list of main slang, and I love this one. Hit a spot of black ice and sent her out into the pucker brush. Damn near spilt my Allens. <laughs> <laughs> which just oh my god which just means <laughs> that you they spilled your allen keys <laughs> uh allen's is a type of brandy uh so it means that they were drinking and driving and they hit a spot of ice and crashed the car <laughs> <laughs> wow that the way you said that sounds like uh robert pattinson in the lighthouse <laughs> you fucking fought you fucking fought that's so funny well we learned so much wow. slang today uh, you can call us old if you want, but most of your shit uh, comes from us anyway. So yeah, Shut and up. most of the shit that we say comes from people in the 1950s. Yep, it's all <laughs> and all the all the style and fashion that's going around again is from the 90s or the fucking 50s as well. There's no in between. Yeah, style icons. People still dress like they're from the 70s. Yeah, like it's starting to become like flared pants and brown tan jackets and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's all just cycles. We're all going to die. We are dust and into dust we shall return. Exactly right. Exactly right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, let us know. Let us know what you got on our quizzes and take them honestly. Yeah. Don't look up the answers. Like, no one's going to shame you. No one's going to feel bad. Yeah. Just, uh, we got answers wrong. Ethan got two out of ten on the Irish quiz. Yeah, I did real good. Real, real good. Yeah. And uh, let us and know. And I got nine out of ten, and I'm Irish. <laughs> <laughs> let us know if you have any fun slang from wherever you're from. Um, yeah. We should do more podcast episodes like this where we do like a little game. A little that was fun. Yeah. Good idea. That was fun. It was a great time. Yeah. Great, great time. Well, I'll jerk you off under the table as a thank you later. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, everybody. See you later. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Brain leak.